to order. First thing is approval minutes of February 4, 6, and 10th. I recommend we approve the minutes. A second. As presented. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so then we have additions to the uh, agenda. I have three. One is the most recent Council of Governments meeting, which is on February 13th. Um, next is um, uh, Budget 2021. And uh, third is the uh, uh, Fire Marshal Employment. Compensation, and actually I have a fourth, which is Historic Society request. So, is there a second to adding those four things? <clears throat> a second. Any other additions? No. All those, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so let's see, uh, communications, uh, I got communications from Ted Chimi who is here reporting for duty from Alaska after a um, exciting trip down the Alcan Highway. <laughs> uh, he will be showing up at the town garage for work tomorrow. Great. So he's happy to be in Cornwall. So. He's ahead of the schedule. He is ahead of schedule. He had to plow his way here. <laughs> um, so that was one communication. Another uh, new hire is uh, I did complete the paperwork to hire uh, uh, Janelle Mullen as town planner from the Council of Governments. So she started to work with planning and zoning, commission people on implementing the town plan. Great. So, um, so those are just a couple of communications. Public comments, are there any comments? Public? Okay. Uh, next, uh, WMC, contract extension, West Cornwall Sewer Septic Study. Uh, we were mostly, we were mostly at the um, meeting at five o'clock, which the study group did vote unanimously to uh, recommend extending the contract uh, with WMC to get us through a town meeting in uh, the summer about a proposed uh, treatment facility for West Cornwall. Um, it was a good meeting in which they laid out some upcoming things as far as the application to USDA um, some potential sites and uh, also looking at different types of technology that might be useful. Uh, they are not having a, a regularly scheduled meeting in March and will meet again in mid-April. So I would make a motion then to uh, extend the WMC contract uh, th through work tasks for a budget not to exceed six thousand dollars. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? You were all there. What do you think? No, I'm. Um, what I was really thankful for tonight was just to hear that this is going to take us to the town meeting. Mm -hmm. That was something that I was reticent about. Okay. You know, are there going to be other bills? Um, so I feel confident that that's it for this stage. Right. Um, and I urge us as a board to make sure that in the following stages, we outline potential future costs ahead of time. Yep, yeah, there will be. As much to the best of our ability. Right. <laughs> but I think okay. that's important. Okay. Any other discussion? Not from me. 
Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next office email, Marina and Jonathan, take it so, away. We are up and running. Oh. Um, I have a, a brief like sort of format for the email that I, I can show you. It basically has the town seal at the top, um, which I think is legitimate. Oh, that's as good as any, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. So this is something that, that picture. That anyway. we could do something colorful. We this is things we can discuss online, but I think to get started, this is a logo, this is very Cornwall. Um it's got the, bricks. the footer of the email has, you know, Board of Selectman, Town of Cornwall. Um, I have to I'm gonna pick the lawyer's brain here about copyright situations and all that. Um, I have a landing page, which means it's a it's a URL, so it's a web it's a website that anyone can follow to sign up to be on this mm -hmm. newsletter. So we'll throw that out there into the public, and then we'll also give the option to contact Jonathan if that's okay with you mm -hmm. to send Jonathan their email addresses, and he can manually put them in. So we're good to go. And our what is our <coughs> email address oh yes so it's <laughs> that's important it's cwl news at optonline.com cwl news 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 at, but that's actually not the most important part of this whole situation because you can reply to the email to mm -hmm. our newsletter but really what it is it's a newsletter it's not a forum okay which is what the cornwall groups exists as so what the most important thing is is the url link to sign up to this newsletter so, so that will be posted in the cornwall groups please finish the address so i can write it down cwl, CWL news, news at optonline.com thank you but but like i said that's Auburn not going to get you very far oh, oh, dot, net. dot net sorry oh, dot but that's net. not going to get you very far is my point in this oh what what needs to happen is and we'll publish this on the groups and hopefully in association with the website committee that you follow a link you put your email address in and you get subscribed to this email list that's the most important thing so okay. emailing that email address isn't going to get you very far okay so that's pretty much ready to go say that again just a url <laughs> I can't say the URL because it's like a long URL with like a MailChimp with a lot of numbers and letters. So it's going to be put on hopefully the website, in the email group, the group, the iOS groups, and Jonathan will be able to give that to people as well. That's how it works. So this is just a one, this is mostly a one way uh, communication of events. Exactly. And if people want to communicate directly to the board and get on a specific issue then they still talk to us through CWL Correct. selectman and optonline dot Correct. so this is much more of a newsletter which is right. what the purpose of it I think mm -hmm. that was the mission statement of it was to have an email that came out from the board of selectmen jointly to the population of Cornell that wants to receive it if they want to talk about something that's in the email, they can email Cornwall Selectman right. at optonline.net. Um, they can go to the groups page and have a forum discussion, but this is very much a one-way information flow of topics we've discussed, any actions we've taken, events in Cornwall, things we want to promote, etc. And when do you foresee our first newsletter we could, when's our big launch we could do our first launch after this meeting whenever so mm -hmm. your thought uh, this is a weekly thing monthly no bi -weekly. I'm, I'm thinking bi-weekly bi-weekly okay if Jonathan is okay with this because I, I foresee it coming through your office right um, yeah. with our ability to have eyes on it to mm -hmm. to say yes we all agree that this was what was 
agreed upon, discussed. Um, and I think it's going to take a while to get businesses and community members involved. So, you know, I think I in six months, I see most of Cornwall businesses being like, hey, like, I, I'd like this included. We're having this event. Can you put this in the newsletter this month? Um, I think that's mm -hmm. going to take time. That's not going to be an immediate, okay. you know, everyone's on board. But I think as the Board of Selectmen, we can just begin to roll out information. And it can be short, it, you know, it depends on how much we're dealing with on on that <coughs> bi-weekly schedule. Priscilla just signed up. Yeah. <laughs> She's our first. So I'm the we, only one. <laughs> right, so we're set, we, do we have a list at this point? Yes, I'm the only one on the list. Well, Priscilla's so, so No, good. but so here's the thing about it too, and to the Cornell community. You have to express your willingness to be on this list. I can't sign you up without your approval. Mm -hmm. It's a newsletter, it's a marketing tool, so you have to make the effort to follow the link, sign up, call or email Jonathan, you can email me as well, and we'll make sure you're on that list. Um, but this is a, you have to volunteer to be on this list. We cannot put you on this list. Unless you're a town official. We did have people on a yes. town hall newsletter before, so we can, we can draft a few people just to We'll, we'll beef it up, right. but but I think this is ready to go. I think it's exciting. Um, it's user friendly. Good. Um, did you? Did Lisa Smock get a hold of you? Is this being so publicized? I'm the, in so the I'm the print? editor along with Lisa and Ann Gold for March. So we'll we'll put it in. Right. So that's this will be our soft opening, and then we'll have a big Correct. splash. Correct. After we can have made, hopefully a larger article about it. Right. Because the the only annoying thing about the URL to, to sign up for this newsletter is it is, it's not just like, you know, cornwallnewslettersignup.com. It's a MailChimp originated URL with a lot of numbers and letters. And so even printing that in the Chronicle we can do, but it's not like, you know, you're sitting there reading the Chronicle, typing in the letters and the numbers. It's not as easy as clicking on a link and doing it. Um, but I think if Jonathan's willing to be the recipient of email addresses, he can input them very easily. Sure, yeah. not against that. Okay, good. All right, so. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, yeah, great. Um, anything else on that? No. Okay. So next, um, we have Namira MOU. Uh, Priscilla and I went to the COG meeting where Tom Kirk, the head of Mira, was there. Um, and that is Materials Innovation and Recycling Authority. It used to be CRA, but they rebranded themselves into this new name. Um, and they have. Um, you get the little PowerPoint thing, and we sat through it. It was very interesting. This uh, was probably like an hour presentation. Um, and it um, basically, again, reiterated what we've discussed here before, that the organization to which we're uh, contracted in a multi-year contract, which I think runs to 2027, 20, um, is having some uh, infrastructure problems. We need to replace the facility. Um, the problem that became very clear in, in the presentation was that their estimated cost of replacing their facility <coughs> is going to be substantially more than the current market rate uh, for disposing of garbage and the problem is so we're talking roughly a market rate currently of ninety dollars a ton and they're asking us to sign somewhere near a 20 to 30 year um, agreement with a target price of hundred and forty five dollars a ton so that's a substantial increase or more increase from what we're paying now and an increase over the market rate where the market goes for 
where the market winds up and how much has increased every year um, is a question mark. Um, the other thing um, was because there's this big differential between the current market rate and the proposed rate that we're supposed to express interest in, um, they need to get commitments from most of the people who use it right now and they're getting uh, pushback from uh, other towns when they look at this increase. Uh, we're not quite as vulnerable perhaps in other places because we do quite a bit of recycling. Um, and it's a little hard to tell if everybody doesn't sign up, yeah. which doesn't sound like everybody's signing up, everybody's looking at other places, trucking the garbage to Ohio or Virginia, which sounds terrible, but it's less costly. So uh, people are looking at that. Um, so if everybody doesn't sign up, then like anything else, people back out, then the $145 is just a, a number. It's not a, it's hard to guarantee something when you have to have everybody. So the 145 is not a guaranteed number. That's, in, that doesn't inflate. Like, let's say if, if a certain number of towns say no, that's not the biggest increase that's possible or is it? Correct. This is this is just a talking, a place to talk. Okay. This is not a guaranteed proposal. The good news is this is not a binding contract. Right. Um, this is just an expression of interest. Um, this will help them budget, per se. Who's in? Uh, Sharon just signed up. Salisbury signed up. Um, I would say quite a bit of pushback from other towns that are were at the table on last Thursday. So, um, what do you think? Well, I prefer the idea of signing up and having it in Connecticut than thinking about trucking something to Ohio. I mean, mm -hmm. it just didn't make sense to me. Um, but I don't have a conclusion that's solid because we weren't given enough information that it would really work. I mean, I was left with the feeling, well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. But you got to tell us you want to sign up. Based on? Yeah. What? Based on right. something ethereal. So I guess at the bottom line, I'm willing to give it a try and to sign up. Uh, I, that's what I would recommend to us. But do I think that's a good solution? Gordon, I don't know. And I listened to that man like you did for over an hour, and um, a man named Tom Kirk. And I don't think they even know. Right. And I mean, their fr that their was frustrating what I walked part, away as with. far as I understand, was that the state is direct, the DEP is directing a lot of this process. And so they, hi they, they had to hire somebody to propose building a plant. And mm -hmm. they were supposed to be able to build a plant for $65 a ton. Well, they didn't do that. They came in with a much bigger number. So they felt they shouldn't be constrained by this whole process, which sounded, for lack of a better word, screwed up. Mm. Um, so it's, again, I would think we would give them a very tentative, we're interested, but uh, we don't see how, based on the presentation, this is a r real thing. And I think my thought was that they, sort of knew that's what's going to happen mm -hmm. and so they want to be able to come back and get out you know get out of this process saying talents are interested yeah. in working on something but this clearly isn't going to work this whole thing is going to fall apart because half the towns are going to bail because they can because they have to do something their taxpayers demand that they do the cheapest thing which isn't this yeah so yeah. they should do something that's much more cost effective if it's something there or maybe this whole technology is so expensive, it's not really what the cutting edge stuff is. So, or, and it also seemed like a lot of towns were sort of waiting to see what's to going on. To see what's got really going to happen. They encourage But I not think to the wait. wait is going to be several years. Yeah. It's not right. going to be over the summer. I mean, I don't right. think 
I don't think we're waiting for something that's positive. And I positive. think also we don't want to be... The, the, what this gives us, even at a high price, is a way to get rid of our garbage. We don't want to all of a sudden be loading up the town trucks and taking it to Virginia. No. You know, we want to have something set up so we, so we or our, pre, our successors, whoever they are, whoever's sitting at this table in five or ten years has a real program yeah. instead of something that's sort of, you know, week by week, what are you doing with your garbage? Well, and ultimately that, that may be what happens as a consequence of this anyway on a larger scale. Right, alternatives to this, because I mean... Right, I mean, you're talking... Right. You're talking major Connecticut cities right. are about to lose a place to get rid of their garbage. Right. So, so something's going to have to shake exactly. out someplace. So I would say we're, we're committed more to the regional concept right. than we are to this plan that says it's going to increase our fees to $145. Right. We can do the math as well as anybody else and say, what? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's a broad increase. Potential. And one of the nice things about Cornwall, unlike most of our neighboring towns, is we don't charge our town right. people right. for using the transfer station. No, I know. That's huge. And it'd be nice to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. So, um, if we get, and we don't have to decide this all uh, thing. Well, if it's non-binding. Uh, I don't think that it's such a risk to sign up for the near t near term. That's it's my probably, two cents. It's probably non-binding on because they need to know they need to basically forecast or try to forecast the future. Yes. So. The first thing, summary, we have to agree with is a tip fee of $145 a ton. So the two, the two issues... But we're bound to that? Well, we're, it's non-binding, but we have to sort of say, conceptually, we would agree to this. It's like, That's what they were asking you to right. agree to. Right, but what's and the alternative? Yeah. They haven't given us an alternative. Right. right. That's... <laughs> Right, so I even went to your brother Jerry and I said, you know, could we do this ourselves here in Cornwall you rather than take what? it somewhere? Take this garbage, could we dig a hole or something? And he kind of smiled at me and said, Priscilla, it's not big enough, number one. And number two, we'd have so many animals coming in. That. The state wouldn't allow. I mean, we had extra room in our landfill, and the state made us close it. Ah. So it's not a question of burying it. They said you will not landfill your garbage anymore. You will take it to Hartford mm -hmm. ah. and burn and it. That I and didn't know. So that was 30 years ago, and oh. here we are. And so here we are. Okay. We we still have room, but that's not held to be the way we do it. Um, so the other, th um, so. So the question is, do we say yes or no, $145 tip fee MSW, if you're agreeing to this, no, if no, what terms would be satisfactory? Oh. I'd almost say, we say no, we would like, we would be open to, see, that's question number one is $145. Second question is 30-year agreement for waste with no opt-out provision necessary to support public bonding, mm -hmm. a mirror. I mean, I have no problem with a 30-year commitment as long as it's somewhat market-based or something. Yeah, well, thanks. But yeah. I don't see how they're going to bond for less unless they get this public commitment. This is the state will do yeah, it. Yeah, that's the how state. they're going to run their numbers. Right. So we can buy, I mean, my first thing is that they have to get the number somehow get the number down, and yes, we would, if they get the number down, we would be open to signing a 30-year agreement. But that might be helpful for them. Right. All right. What's the bottom line, basically, that we'd be in, we, we'd sign on to? Right. That they have to have, um, that we, I think we would, we would agree to um, cooperative, um, CTE 
MSW solution. We answered the second question first, and the, but the first one, I don't think they should. That shouldn't be the start. That here's here's the checkbook. You can do it. I'd be more apt to say no, but we are open to a cooperative deal that has a better chance of attracting the critical mass of towns that they need to do it. Because, I mean, it's not a huge deal for us, but it is a huge deal for a lot of the towns that we need in order to get the critical mass of right. people there. Right, right, right. I mean, so do we, yeah, yeah. Right? So you up for that? So, but so yeah. that number is up to them to decide. Right. They have to get something that's closer to the current price. The current price is what, 95? Well, it's, yeah, it's going up to 95. Yeah, going 90. up to 95. Okay, I'm, right. I'm good with that. Okay, so it's non-binding, so we can always change our mind, but we would say uh, need to get price closer to current rate to achieve Okay, so anyway, we will do a clean copy and send this off. Something with that, Good. those qualifying statements. Well, I think that's more positive than... Just no. Because obviously they're in a bind. Right. Uh, we have well. leverage. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll send that out. So anyway, so I'd make... A motion then that we respond to Mira, wishing them well, but we're not going to conceptually agree to the $145 increase. We would agree to some price that's more like the current rate and that they have a better chance of getting municipalities to do. And that if they get something realistic, then we would be open to a cooperative a Connecticut based solution for our MSW problem. Okay. Okay. And so is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Could I ask a question on that, sir? Yes. Now that it's resolved. Yep. What is in the, you're calling it garbage, but trash, whatever it is, what is actually, what are we paying to tip? Uh, it's household it? garbage that goes in the compactor. Just, the, just goes into the compactor. Yes, it's not the bulky waste. Right. It's not the recyclables. It's just the stuff that goes in the packer. Now, if there was a um, composting facility uh, that uh, you know, commercially composted it and made flower pots out of it or whatever, uh, it would reduce a lot. Would, I'm amazed. I go to the transfer station about once every two weeks, and the smallest thing I have is trash. Most of my recyclables uh, take up easily 90% of what I take in transfer. Mm -hmm. And even that can be cut down. I do, you know, my own backyard compost. But I wonder if there, we could encourage someone to do something like Oh yeah, that. we have, well of course you have to get licensed by DEP in order to have that as part of your license. And other towns are looking at doing that and we have met with our transfer station crew and they've identified compostable materials is probably the easiest way to reduce these numbers. Right. So we are looking at that and I know even this group we've talking to, I mean there's European models that use different technologies. There's still not um, you can't go you can't buy one off the shelf right now, but there are things are moving in that direction. So I think that's, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be more expensive than what we're doing now. It's going to be significant cost, and I think people are aware of things that will enable us to change change our volumes, you know, intelligently. Roughly, what do we generate on a monthly basis? Um, da, 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 da. We, it costs us currently... Tons. Uh, it's costing us currently twenty-four thousand dollars 
just in tip, just to get rid of just in tipping fees. That doesn't include salaries or and that's a, whatever. Well, right. That's, that's a, just the garbage. Right. That's just ninety dollars a ton right now. Right. So, right. So we're we're quickly generating about two thousand tons or so a month. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Two thousand tons. It's probably too much. Two hundred tons. Two hundred tons a month. A month. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's each one of those packers go out. Well, we've dis we've yeah. discussed looking into that potential. Yeah. If, if some other, if someone does get into that, I think there's potential for that eventually. For especially sure. if there's a profit to be made. If you can separate the, you know, compostable material. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, and we've discussed, I mean, I, I mentioned that I know a lot of people, myself included, that don't compost because we have animals at home and we don't want to attract wildlife. And it's just a shame because we would otherwise, you know. So there's potential down the line. Okay. So, speaking of Roger, the next is bridge work. <laughs> Uh, we've talked, we had some ideas coming up. Roger has more ideas of bridges and things. Right. Well, what I'm looking for from the board is uh, a little direction. Uh, I dropped off a draft of an invitation to bid, at least the body of it, for the Cogswell Road and uh, Fort Hill Road. I've got some numbers and oh, good. handouts and such. But uh, did you get copies of this draft? Mm -hmm. I don't know, John. So. I don't think so. Okay, well, uh, essentially, it's an invitation to bid to. We should put a public notice in the newspaper. That way, it gets into a, a system where contractors subscribe mm -hmm. um, and they'll get copies of it. In addition to that, we have a list of contractors we've dealt with, six or eight contractors that typically are interested in this type of work. We could send an invitation to them. Um, you now I realize this is the old one. Uh, <laughs> so we won't pass that on, but there is one uh, that um, if, John, you'd uh, pass that around, the one I dropped off um, about two weeks ago, 10 days ago. In a email, or you dropped off I, a hard copy? I, I dropped off a hard copy. Okay. Um, and I thought we'd just make copies of it. Matter of fact, I gave it to Gordon. It's marked up with mm -hmm. red a little bit. Probably um, have it. But going on from there, um, some of the things we have to do, I think I showed these last time I was here, mm -hmm. but th this is Cogswell Road. And this concrete parapet is deteriorating. Um, we patched it up 20 years ago, and uh, it's not ready to fall down, but it is a little unsightly, and it will continue to deteriorate. The, uh, what's happening is the chemical reaction between the cement and the aggregate is breaking down, and it's falling apart. So at any rate, what I suggested as far as the most economical solution is to put in uh, a galvanized steel parapet the same height as what is there now It'd be a double rail like that which is exactly what we did at uh, Smith Place and uh, the gravel bank I've got pictures of those but this is what it would mm -hmm. look like so it wouldn't be much different than what's there now if you look at the concrete it would never 1935 but uh, this would be the simplest and least expensive. When we get into expense, Gordon and I talked about what would the difference be between timber, um, what's called weathering steel, and the galvanized steel. So I talked to a few suppliers and contractors, and uh, the difference between the galvanized material uh, that's pictures of uh, Fort Hilbert. We could attach to the existing posts 
on Ford Hill Road, take the wire rope railing off and uh, put up the typical galvanized steel, which would essentially be like that. There's a close-up of what it is. So that's what the, again, least expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, to do this bridge with the galvanized would be approximately $23,000, plus or minus. Um, Depends what the bids would come in and so forth, but it's a it's only 20 feet of actual bridge rail, which is this double section, and then it would go to a single uh, conventional RB metal beam rail. To do the same amount in timber would be fifty-four thousand uh, dollars. To do the same thing with the um, the weathering steel, which uh, though some people like it. I'm not a fan of it. So is this the steel? This one? That's the galvanized steel. That's the galvanized. And which one is the timber? The, uh, the timber is other side. No? You got more pictures. Okay. Here, this is all timber. Oh, the, this okay. is the new bridge they just did in the center of Milton. It has a, a heavy timber front, but they're subject to Rubbing on by plows they're and so ugly. forth. What's the yeah, lifespan difference between uh, the galvanized? galvanized the galvanized, uh, right. the straight yeah, galvanized is the longest lasting. Right. right. And it's easiest for us to repair. This is the uh, weathering steel. And this it's, is the what steel? It's weathering called weathering steel. steel. It's rusting. Rusting. Now, they, they do an acid wash on the steel and they don't galvanize it. How much is that? 10% more. So that would be essentially $26,000 would be the weathering steel. $24,000 by my estimate for the galvanized steel. And we're talking about ca a cosmetic look difference? Mm. Yes, right. No different. It's supposed to look better, although I think it just looks like rusty steel. <laughs> I mean, I just thought what it is. They're all ugly. Well, they're all ugly, but the thing is, it, it's a matter of safety. Well, That's your typical galvanized. You get to. Uh, no, it's good. Oh. More pictures of rusty steel. Is there a way to play around with what's existing and a galvanized steel like reinforcement? I mean, I feel like it's so it's so charming to have this sort of I mean, it may be wishful thinking. Right. I'm just asking. To replace the concrete would be the most expensive option. Understood. Okay. So uh, there's no playing around you with You can't the, do anything with, with the that. existing. No. Okay. It's it's disintegrating is what it's doing. Uh, we we did 20 years ago we went out and we tried to do some treatment to it with uh, some specialized chemicals. If you don't maintain it, I mean, it's like uh, waxing your furniture. You don't do it every year and so forth, it's going to fall apart. We have an extra 20 years of uh, the parapets that were there. Um, could we do something cosmetic? Like, could we do the actual structural changes with galvanized steel and then, like, make it look nicer than what galvanized steel is? Uh, it would only cost more money and not give you any benefit, really. Uh, to try to fix this up, the the core is disintegrating. I understand. It, it, I'm so just saying. The, the expensive part is going to be cutting the concrete out. Right. The relatively inexpensive part is putting a galvanized steel again, much like the gravel bank or yeah. Smith Place. No, I understand. I'm just saying there's a large difference between this aesthetic and this aesthetic. So I'm trying to mm -hmm. find right. a happy medium if it's possible. Um, what do we have, what do we use for guardrail on uh, flat rocks in Valley Road? Same thing, uh, RB metal beam rail. So the newest bridges we put in all have metal beam rail. Metal beam rail. So all this, this concrete will be it? taken out. Mm -hmm. Right down to what's called the safety walk. See this flat surface here? Yeah. This is about 30 inches uh, from front edge to back edge. So this would be taken down and uh, capped off, anchor bolts put in to hold the, and again, it's only 20 feet. Um, 
the whole length of the bridge. But really to go any further to come up with a proposal so the contractors can bid on it, I've got to know what is it we want to do. Well, the Ford Hill I don't find objectionable because it's much less public. This is the one that disturbs me because mm -hmm. it's such a pretty area. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. these are so unattractive to me. I, that's the nicest way I can mm -hmm. put it. Well, it does make it look Sounds a little better more. Sounds better than fucking ugly. <laughs> no, I mean, that was where my question stemmed from. Like, I'm, I'm aware of this engineering structural mm -hmm. requirement, but I do feel like there are projects that have been done that have facades that are non-functional. It's all a function of economics. Right. So. If we're willing to spend the money, we can do anything. I know. Else. Isn't that just the thing? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a limited budget, and we're going to try to get two yeah, bridges in at the same time. I understand. The rest of the work, uh, as far as what needs to be done at Ford Hill Road, that's all straightforward. We're going to strip the deck and put a new membrane waterproofing system on yeah. that, repave the deck, repave the approaches. But there are some substructure concrete repairs that have to be done, and that will be done. Mm -hmm. um, all in accordance with DOT standards. It's yeah. really, what do you want it to look like when you're all done? Yeah. Put Gordon, it, have you ever had a situation where you've done the structural changes and then private individuals have decided to, you know, donate to judge it up a bit? Uh, let's see. I have to think about that one. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> you, you, you've been around for a while, so you a may know if there's while. a precedent. Right. I'm just wondering... I mean, we have, I mean, the, the other, we do have wooden, we have all sorts of bridges in town. Mm -hmm. We have a few that are left, well, I'm not sure we have any left, but we've replaced the ones that are made out of steel for their decking. We have most, we have a few of these bridges that were put in as part of the WPA or whatever in the 30s, which are are iconic and we did make an effort we have made an effort to <clears throat> save them partly because of the aesthetics um, but this one itself seems like it's deteriorating more and there are other bridges of the same vintage that aren't the top isn't as bad as mm -hmm. these in fact some engineers asked us 20 years ago to rip out the entire thing so we got at least 20 years out of mm -hmm. the old concrete but um, have we ever had people because um, again you have to sort of say what what would you really do to make once you get past well I mean you as Roger said you got three options you have concrete mm -hmm. you have wood with the steel back and you have steel um, it seems like we are putting steel in other places and unfortunately the aesthetics of this are much nicer than the current things. Whatever you do has to have some um, chance of success as far as um, being see guard, guardrails. The only one of the few things the town has to do on its highways is to have an effective guardrail system mm -hmm. to keep uh, people from hazardous situations the best we can and, and also this um, the cable system there now is is inadequate so at this point you know you would have to I mean if somebody wanted to rebuild what's I mean because you could have all sorts of different designs but in order to probably please most people you'd have to probably replace what's there with something similar to what's there. I don't think, we do have some bridges that are wood decks and wood, um, and have wood railings. I don't think they're gonna last anywhere near as long as the steel. Right. Plus you have pressure treated, which is sort of a maintenance nightmare. Um, so I don't have any really great answers on 
alternatives to the metal, you know, at this point. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it too is just people can get used to situations after a while. Is it, th this length is 20 feet. You're going to need a rail system both on the approach and the exit from the bridge. So you're going to have to have something other than concrete. Right now we've got wire rope railing, which right. uh, I've got pictures of that as well here, that uh, is very unattractive. Uh, the metal beam rail would go right, in lieu of the concrete, would go right across. The, um, yeah, no, I, I can't go. I, I don't just, go for this. Uh, I, I can eliminate the rusty one pretty quickly. I think. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. No, so I eliminate. Yeah, I, I agree. Can eliminate the rusty one. Yeah, eliminate and the I rust. And I think the pressure treated just from personal experience deteriorates really quickly. And is not. I know. I wish there was just something you could do to make it less austere. <laughs> well, it does look industrial. I will agree. Right. I mean. I mean. Is it landscaping? That's the nicest way. To is put that it. the cheapest way to do it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, landscaping behind it would be a good idea. Right, that you was don't want my... to put anything in front of it. No, of course. But I'm thinking landscaping behind it might be a cheaper alternative. It certainly would be because one bush gives you a... Exactly. Because that wood is not attractive at all. No, that's no. terrible. No. Well, I think and you get used to the metal So I guess you you're down ready. to this. If, if you looked at this in uh, Milton, and I did talk to the contractor that put it in there, yes, just that rail system was over $100,000. Wow. The wood really? rail system? Yes, wood rail system. Oh. It, it's all custom made. Yeah. All the cuts have to be made on a specific angle. The backing behind it, there's tubular box beam behind some of it. There's flat steel behind others. Uh, the timber won't take the impact of an errant vehicle, mm -hmm. so you have to back it up with steel. Uh -huh. At least the steel, if some, this is a, a five road intersection actually, and it's um, yeah. subject to errant it vehicles. Is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're stuck with this. Uh, that's what I would like to at least bid on, and if, um, if somebody wanted to include in the contract some funds for planting behind it, uh, would, that would be I'd love um, that option. encouraged. But then also, what about how do you keep the plants from covering up the beam rail? Well, as long as it's behind it, the, yeah. the plows will do that. And you could get some plants that were not necessarily right. out of control. Well, we could yeah. ask anyway. Over on Julia Scott's side, there's, there's plenty of plants plenty. there. There's oh, there plenty. are. They're, they're all behind I know. the wire rope rail. And then right. the metal beam rail would go exactly where the exactly. wire is. And get, what I'm proposing is just enough for the bridge area. Correct. Uh, so and can we limit how far? Yes. Uh, part of the thing, too, is if we cut down on the rail system either the side line. of that. Yep. Cuts down right. Cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cuts it. Cuts it, but also cuts down the visual. Yeah. I mean, the best, the best way to reduce the impact is put in less. Less. So if we could cut that down to a minimum on that side. Mm -hmm. On both sides. On, on both on sides. Mountain. On all four. Because a lot of the rail's been taken out. Um, right. Further up uh, Cogswell Road. And then you on this side, you'd have to wrap it around the corner. Yes. Right. That's, That's pretty much and as well as. Probably around the other side too, because that seemed to be the uh, south side of the bridge is when you, I think you're more likely to get right. people having trouble. And in the same contract, it would not be a big deal to relocate the dry hydrant there. I, I suggest we relocate it into a, an area that has more rapid flow of water. Right. Right um, now, it's. Well, we area. might have to replace so, it. Yeah. Yeah. Or just make provision in the beam rail for, for a hydrant setup. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's, Thank you. So then there's a motion about to bid for both of these bridges? Well, uh, what, I, what I'd ask for is just um, uh, an invitation to bid. And what right. the invitation to bid would include is a pre-bid um, meeting here at the town hall. Right. So before we'd receive any bids, we'd have uh, all the contractors that are going to participate in this come in, sit down, and understand what it is we're looking for. This will, there's very little engineering involved mm -hmm. here. 
but it will be classified as a design build um, structure like we've done you know, with the last two repair, last four, last four uh, we've had as design build. And that has worked out pretty well and very cost effective. Because most of these contractors really know what they want to do. And as long as it's in conjunction with the uh, standard DOT specifications, I'm all for it. Okay, okay. And all the work will be done in the town right away? Yes. Right, because this is a wide right away. Yep. Right. And every, everything will be done within the existing footprint of the bridges, the both bridges. Right. And by preserving the underneath part of the bridge, we're going to be impacting the construction will be a fraction of what it would be if we replaced the whole right. thing. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. So I'll go ahead then with a invitation to bid if anything I will give uh, Jonathan a copy of the letter for for the actual invitation to contractors. Thank and you. we'll put that same invitation in the uh, newspaper. Yeah, and I'll look for it. It's probably just in a... Yeah, I'll, I've, I've got it. On my, I'll send you a copy. Awesome. So let's see. So then we have... Uh, Kerma of sexual harassment training. There is state law that was pa plas passed last year that makes all employers, uh, I think, or having more than three employees, have to uh, have uh, sexual harassment training for all employees. So this would cover all town workers. It may cover anybody covered by workers' comp. So we're still trying to figure out exactly who is covered. Probably fire and ambulance people. Um, Where does this take place? So what they're working on is doing, an, they can either do an, a, what we'll probably do is do a night session and then they also have, they're working on an online training session so people can actually log in and get credit for it by taking a two hour uh, training program. But I think it's pretty, clear that's what's required so we're looking sometime this spring of setting something up and um, the woman that was here said she's doing four or five of these every week for the next wow. long time because okay. all towns have to do it so anyway sign of the times but I think it's a good thing to, for us to uh, to work with and, uh, and do we have to go to those two I would think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're supposed to be in charge, so. Huh? I mean, all employees, I think everybody saw it in there, so. Yeah. So, um, I don't think it makes a distinction between part time and full time, so. Again, I, I think it would be good because they are doing a um, an online thing, so, say, like the lifeguards could then. You know, you just say you have to do this as a additional employment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the deal. Makes sense. Okay. So anyway, that's that's some news there. So are you going to announce? The yeah. Once of once this? we get, I just wanted to let you know I've met okay. with the people. We're going to pursue it probably April, May, something like that. Mm -hmm. And my thought is, we probably should have some night session available for people that may not have internet access or may not. Or want to go to a a um, session, yeah. As opposed to do it online, um, and then we'll make the rest of it available. Great. Okay. So then, other issues. Uh, Cog meeting. I had to leave it early. Priscilla, anything exciting happened after I left? We mostly dealt with Mira. Yeah. Anything else to come up that was substantial? Nothing. You missed nothing. I missed nothing. Except a Good. lot of talk. A lot of talk. Plenty of that. <laughs> Good. Uh, next, we we did, I think I sent forward to you um, a, um, this is on the budget, mm -hmm. uh, a request from the Conservation Commission, uh, $5,000, which is a fairly big increase of their budget to hire somebody to do, look at special places in the town. Uh, my thought is not to include it at this point. Um, I think we've gone through a pretty exhaustive process of uh, 
plan of conservation development and we have hired a town planner that's dealing with a lot of these issues and they will be working on the regulations so I'm a little uh, interested in not getting two tracks going at once and hiring people uh, but I'm still willing to have the commission come here and present their case or tell us what they're doing yeah I'm fine with that I mean I'm I know other towns in the region are using their historical societies as tourism draws uh -huh. um, so so this is the conservation commission oh sorry I'm on the historical society right okay. wrong okay okay so Let any me thoughts pull that on one up. <laughs> Five. Gordon, and you know these meetings are too late for me. <laughs> Sorry. Conservation. I know, and it's not fair. I said throw this. Stuff it is out. not fair. It's not fair. Um, okay. But it happens anyway. We don't I'm have to decide. I'm pulling that up now. I'm happy. I see this now. I'm happy to hear from them. Right. Okay. And the big news is we are presenting our budget as it's drafted to the board of finance. Seven o'clock here That's on right. Thursday night. So again, we have some open areas and um we'll go take it one step at a time this thursday night this thursday at seven o'clock seven o'clock seven p.m right here at town hall any other thoughts on the budget no. so we'll see if we can put that on the next agenda or so okay um Next, we have uh, Stan McMillan, the fire marshal. Uh, there's some change in the regulation, so he requests that he become a employee of the town, so he's covered by workers' comp, which I think he has to be covered by, as opposed to being an independent contractor. So uh, Barbara has talked to our insurance agent, and for his little uh, amount of salary, this will not increase our insurance rate but it will retain the services of a valued veteran um, official and it makes sense because basically he is doing our work when he comes to a scene for an investigation we are required to have a fire marshal and he's done it for so long yes. and he's experienced so it sounds like it's a worthwhile right. expense for the town. Right. And even not a, just a change. It's not yeah. even. Yeah. So anyway, with your permission, we'll just move over to the payroll, as opposed to independent contractor. So that will afford him the protection of workers' comp. As opposed to I move we do it. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. On to the Historic Society, request for relief. Did you have a chance to read this? The Historic Society has been given two undeveloped lots of land at the end of Town Street South by Lady of Staten Island. Um, yes, that's what I actually was in my head. Well, <clears throat> if I may share something. Yes. You may share something. They came to me to put this on the market yes. last Thursday. I have never had such speedy, frequent response. I had my first offer Thursday night. It wasn't high enough. So I said to Lisa, I'll ask them to raise their offer. On Thursday, she wanted to accept it. And I said, Thurs I said to her, on on Friday, rather. I said, Lisa, let's wait until Monday because I have five other people that have contacted me that are looking at it. So she said, okay. So Monday at 4 o'clock, or 2 o'clock, she came to my office, and we had three offers. And I had recommended to her that we go to highest and best. Uh -huh. And she opened them on Wednesday at 4.45. They have to be in by 4 o'clock on Wednesday, tomorrow. So she's coming back tomorrow, and we're going to have in envelopes all of the offers individually, and she's going to open them and make a decision. Right. So 
it's going to be sold. The, the bottom line is they're going to be sold. And I don't know how much tax liability she's going to have. Hopefully, it'll be passed on to the new buyer. Right. So. They could make, isn't that normal condition of sale that the taxes will be paid? Does it, but there's no, it depends, it's negotiable well, usually, who, who pays the tax. Usually, it's broken tax. up by date. Right. So that if she, if they owed taxes from January 1st, and they accepted an offer on February 20th, usually the Historical Society or the owner would be owing the taxes from January 1 to February 20. And once the offer's, it, well actually it usually happens when it closes. So depending, one of the uh, offers is from somebody that wants to build. And so they, they will want to do a deep hole perk test, which has been done before and it's been approved, but it's too old. Mm -hmm. And we are in February. We don't do deep hole perk tests until mid-April because of frozen ground, not because we want to do it later. But if it's somebody who just wants it, like one of the abutting neighbors, not to have something built there, then it might close sooner. So I won't really have um, a good picture on that until tomorrow evening and then if we do it the regular way the historical society would be uh, owing the tax from the first of the year until the closing date of the sale and then the new owner would take over so it's a partial right so Okay, so just so you know, there are limits to how much we can abate taxes. It's generally for people, the only condition that I know we can abate taxes is generally for people that are unable to pay them because of poverty. Mm -hmm. Now in this case, this is a pretty good gift and even if they have to pay half of a year's taxes, it's still a pretty good gift. It's pretty good. It's Once wonder, they get the money it's a and wonderful, from the sale, yes. It's a wonderful event for the historic society yes so because i know even if you are a charitable organization such as a church if you have a parsonage that you rent out for rent as opposed to having a parson there Correct. you have to pay tax Correct. on that parsonage even if you are a wonderful charitable organization so i would be somewhat hesitant on granting relief especially if it's not burdensome because it seems like it's still a good it's a good day for the historic society I would on the other hand not be inclined to charge them interest if this goes on for a long period of time so but I don't think it's going to go it doesn't sound like it's going to go on for a long period of time this may even be a a quick thing, a quick thing that's decided before we even meet again okay I'm hoping that so, will be the case so and I, I, will keep I can get back to Lisa that we're not inclined to do. We would like to see this. <laughs> we'd like to see it sold as soon as possible. It mm -hmm. sounds like that's that's happening. And this matter will resolve itself that way. Because we have also increased our annual contribution to this historic society happily. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. And they they are doing great programs. Okay, but again, fair. I think that's a fair thing. And on the other hand, I don't. Yeah. We're not going to no. make any money out of this, but also we have to be like everything else. We have to be wary. We have to be wary of setting a precedent. Correct. We're doing yeah. our decisions. Correct. Okay, so we'll let it sit there, and I will call it. And I will keep Lisa, you both congratulate her on the success and wish them well. Sorry, and just to alleviate my confusion, the conservation request for the budget was not sent to us previously. That was in addition to the agenda. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I was like yeah, we a little got, bit out of there. Yeah, we got yeah, we got that that was sent to us yeah. like mid month as opposed okay. to so we didn't have that earlier in our budget. No, I stuff. just was confused because I was like, did I see that or not? Okay. Okay, did you see it? Did we get it to you? It might have gone out in the last couple of days. I don't think I got that. Okay. But All it right. could be me. I I'll I'll backtrack my emails. Okay.
No, no, no. It's, it, may, it may be me. I just was caught off guard there. So it's a lot I'll of look, I'll look. stuff. Okay. So, I think that's about it. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Okay, so we have, uh, we're getting there. Uh, public comment, how's public? Still awake? Still here? Actually. Here's a comment, good. Old business. Old business. I'd, um, ah. I guess I'd like the board's uh, approval to take what action may be necessary to complete uh, the Lake Road project. Uh, I had a great deal of difficulty communicating with the contractor. Don't know why. Uh -huh. But uh, it's been quite a while. Uh, there's no reason why the, again, <laughs> yard rail can't be installed uh, with such an open winter and, and a relatively mild winter. I've talked, been talking to contractors about yard rail. They're out working on it now. And uh, if the contractor cannot conclude the project, and it's just establishing turf and installing a guardrail. Um, I can arrange to have it done and deduct those items from his contract, if that's the pleasure of the board of selectmen. That I just want to put in my back pocket. I will talk to them, even if I have to go down there and knock on the door. They're not responding to emails or my telephone calls, but uh, I certainly know where they are. And, would not be bashful about going in. Yeah, we'd like to have that tidied up. So, with your blessing, I will take Go. what action I feel appropriate to conclude. Right. Including, uh, essentially, suspending any further operations and, you know, also, we owe them about $40,000. So I'm surprised they're not paying attention. Hmm. But uh, hmm. we're, we're obligated to pay that. That's work they've already completed. But there's still about $6,000 worth of work to be done. But, um, yeah, I was kind of wondering, so when you're driving through the area that was the culvert that was redone, is there supposed to be something on the sides? Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. Right. That's what I had assumed, okay. Industrial looking guardrail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, A galvanized yeah. steel guardrail. Exactly. All right. So I will take what action feels good. Good, all right, thank you, Roger. Okay, any other public comments? Then we're on to bill payments. That's it. Right? That's it. That's the highlights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan, okay. I found this. I put in 